Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Cabinet of Curiosities on Our Own Devices. I'm Jean Messier and today we are continuing our look at Cold War Era Nuclear, Biological and Chemical Warfare or NBCW equipment. Thanks to some excellent collector friends of mine, I have here a variety of Canadian military radiac equipment which was intended to monitor radiation levels and soldiers' exposure to radiation in the event of a nuclear exchange. There's a lot of neat stuff to look at here, so let's dive right in. So the first items I have to show you today are gamma survey meters for measuring radiation levels in the environment. Now, throughout the Cold War, the Canadian military used a wide variety of radiation measuring equipment, including the CDV-700, which was a military version of a very common Geiger-Muller tube-based detector used in civil defense. And this could detect both gamma rays and beta particles, but to detect beta particles you had to slide away a metal shield around the detecting element to expose the Geiger-Muller tube to the environment. Otherwise the casing on the detection element would block out beta particles as well as alpha particles and only allow gamma rays through. There was also the IM5005, which was a rather large device for use in, say, a forward radiation shelter, a headquarters, and it had a variety of attachments, including one for detecting beta contamination in drinking water. But for the most part, military survey meters tend to be based on gamma rays, because materials that emit alpha particles and beta particles tend not to be all that dangerous unless you get them into your body, either through ingestion or inhalation. Beta particles and alpha particles can typically be blocked by either your skin or sufficiently thick material like in an NBCW suit. So gamma rays, on the other hand, are a completely different matter because they are highly penetrating and you really can't effectively block them with a lead suit that would be light enough for an ordinary soldier to wear on the battlefield. So you really wanted to check your gamma levels when going out into the open. So this is an IM5016, fairly common gamma survey meter. This is a low range meter that would have gone from 0 to 100 Röntgens per hour. This is based on an ionization chamber, which is a little sealed uh, unit of low pressure gas in the bottom of the casing. And because this is meant to detect gamma radiation, it doesn't matter that the whole body of this is made out of cast aluminum. Gamma rays can get through just fine. And this was manufactured by the Canadian Admiral Corporation, which, as we'll see, manufactured quite a bit of radiac equipment for the Canadian military. But the more common and widely used radiac meter in the Canadian military was this guy, the IM-108, which you might remember from my video on the nuclear fallout reporting system bunker. So this was issued uh, on the basis of one per platoon-sized unit, and this is very convenient to, say, hang from your equipment, as so, so you could check it while on the march. So this is a much higher range survey meter, which goes from 0 to 500 Röntgens per hour. And so let's pull this out of its protective casing and have a look at some of the controls. So what's neat about these is that the actual ion chamber is sealed inside, but the battery compartment is easily removable. And the reason for this is for use in cold weather, you could easily pop the battery compartment out, tuck it into your coat, and use your body heat to keep it warm and keep the meter running. We also have down here an on-off knob. Uh, you can set it to set, and this allows you to zero the device. So you can flip this lever to one side, and this allows you to zero the needle. If you flip it to the other side, this actually increases the sensitivity of the dial by tenfold. And what this allows you to do is calibrate your meter using a low-level radioactive source, so say a piece of cobalt-60. Um, that way you can actually test the meter without having to get out a very hotly radioactive source and expose yourself to that radiation. Now, interestingly enough, there were a number of versions of this, uh, one of which was a training version, which was distinctive in that it was made out of red-orange fiberglass. And this was actually not a radiation detection instrument at all. Rather, it was based on radio. So during training exercises, they would set up these little radio masks that would send out a signal. And each of the training devices would be equipped with a little radio receiver. 
And so soldiers could go around and find the radioactive sources without actually exposing them to any real radiation. Now this is curious because a uh, story from my father when he was doing civil defense training in the 60s, uh, they would give them radioactive sources. They would pull out a big lead pig full of little buttons of cobalt 60 and say hide them around the local high school and they had to pick up their survey meters and go looking for them. So the military got really fancy fake radiation meters to allow them to train where civilians were just exposed to radiation. Kind of makes you think. So having a portable radiac meter is all fine and dandy, but what happens if you don't particularly feel like going into a contaminated environment to take a reading? Well, then you get yourself one of these, the IM5015 Remote Monitoring Radiac Meter, which you'll also probably recognize from my video on the nuclear fallout reporting system. Now, those bunkers were meant to be equipped with this type of equipment, which has a separate ion chamber, a monitoring head, which would be mounted on the surface on a pole or a bracket, the side of a building, something like that, and have a long cable coming down into the bunker to this readout mounted on the wall, allowing you to monitor radiation levels up on the surface without leaving the safety of the bunker. However, as I've covered in that video, the Canadian military very quickly ran out of IM5015s and had to give IM108s to the prospective occupants of these bunkers, forcing them to go out of the bunker every hour to take a radiation reading and turning the whole enterprise into essentially a suicide mission. But for more detail on that, please check out that previous video. Anyways, the box for this thing is huge. It did not fit in frame here, so I'm just going to show you an insert shot showing the entire kit. So inside would be a spare monitoring head, a long length of cable, as well as some brackets for mounting the monitoring head on a pole or the side of a building. So the next item here is another one that you might recognize if you're a longtime viewer of the channel. This is a Radiac Meter number one, and this is featured in one of my very earliest Cabinet of Curiosities videos. But since that video is pretty old and the audio quality is not that great, I thought I would do a brief recap here since this fits in nicely with all of the rest of the Radiac equipment in this video. But if you want a more in-depth look at this particular artifact, I would recommend you check out that previous video. Anyway, the Radiac Calculator is a circular slide roll that allows you to determine the radiation dose rate at any given point after a nuclear detonation. And so to use this, you would take your gamma survey meter and get a radiation dose rate at the moment. You would then take the slide roll and set the inner dial to the time elapsed since the bomb went off. You then align the outer dial with a point in time after the bomb has gone off, after you've taken your radiation measurement, when you want to know the dose rate, and it will give you the dose rate at that time based on the decay curves of the most common radionuclides produced by a nuclear detonation. And what's particularly neat about this is that this allows you to calculate this dose rate for both detonations on land and sea. When a nuclear weapon goes off over land, it will produce different radionuclides compared to one that goes off in seawater, and they will have different decay curves, and the radiation will taper off at a different rate. So to switch between the two, what you do is you pull out this little clip on top, then pull out the inner and the middle discs, flip them over, Put the clip back in, and there you go. Transition from land to sea. So this is turning into something of a déjà vu episode, because once again we have an item that I've previously covered on my channel, albeit the military version thereof. This is an IM5002 quartz fiber or pencil decimeter, and an IM5120 decimeter charger and reader. Now, a decimeter is a device used to monitor one's cumulative exposure to ionizing radiation, and there's many different types working on different principles. For example, there's the film badge decimeter, which is just a little holder for a piece of photographic film that gets progressively more fogged as it is exposed to ionizing radiation. And to read that badge, you develop the film and determine the extent of the fogging. The quartz fiber decimeter, though, works on a slightly different principle. So inside the decimeter is a thin fiber made out of quartz. And to set the decimeter, 
you take it to this charging station, stick it in, and turn the knob to charge. And this imparts a static charge onto the fiber, making it stand on end, sort of like your hair does if you shuffle across a shag carpet or touch a Van de Graaff generator. You then wear the decimeter on your person, and as it's exposed to radiation, the ionizing effect of that radiation will cause the quartz fiber to slowly lose its static charge and start to bend, and it bends across a tiny little scale inside the optics of the decimeter. So when you want to read this and figure out how much radiation you've been exposed to, you simply hold it up to the light, or if you don't have a light handy, you stick it back into the decimeter charger and a little light will turn on allowing you to read the scale and figure out what your radiation dose is. And when you're done and you want to reset the decimeter for another round, you again put it in the charger, turn it to charge, it imparts another static charge, makes the fiber stand on end, and you're ready to go again. So quartz fiber decimeters were used well into the 1960s, but starting in the early 1950s in both the American and Canadian militaries, they started to be replaced by an entirely different system known as the DT-60. And I have right here a pair of DT-60 decimeters. So you can see these look kind of like dog tags, and indeed these were meant to be worn around your neck on a chain. And if we look at the back of one, you'll see that there's a pair of holes. And this is for a special tool used to unscrew and open the case. So these really weren't meant to be opened by the average soldier. Instead, you had to submit this to a specially trained officer who would then open them and take the radiation reading. So let's actually open one of these up and have a look inside. So you'll see on either side of the case you have a lead washer with a little hole in the middle. And this is to ensure that the radiation flux entering the interior of the decimeter is fairly constant and even. But the main working part of the decimeter is this little block of glass. And this is a very special silver phosphate glass whose fluorescent properties change with exposure to gamma rays. So the more gamma rays this is exposed to, the more of a certain wavelength of orange light it will emit when exposed to ultraviolet radiation. Now, this effect can't be reversed. You can't actually reset this decimeter. The effect is cumulative. So you'll see on the back of this decimeter, uh, there is a date that it was last measured. So the officer in charge of monitoring the radiation exposure of the troops would have to keep a log of what the decimeter read every time it was brought in. So as you can imagine, this just can't be read in the field by the average soldier by holding it up to the light like a quartz fiber decimeter. Rather, you need a very specific type of equipment. Specifically, one of these, the CP95A decimeter reader. So this is essentially just a spectroscope. It has a UV lamp on the inside, which shines through the glass block of the decimeter, and then a detector and amplifier circuit that detects the intensity of the orange wavelength given off by the glass and converts that into a radiation dose in Röntgen. Now, when I was first loaned this unit, it didn't have its own power cable that had long since disappeared, but I managed to jury rig one together, and to my surprise, the unit still works. So why don't we follow the instructions on the very convenient panel on top and see how this thing actually works. All right, so step one is to turn the range switch from 600 Röntgens to 200 Röntgens, the lower scale. You then flip the power switch to on, this is based on vacuum tube electronics, so you have to let them warm up for about a minute before carrying on with the other steps. Right, once the unit is warmed up, you then turn on the UV light by flipping this switch and holding it until the green light turns on. You then take this handle and move it to the center position until the needle falls to the starting arrow. And if it doesn't, then you can use this calibration adjustment knob right here to zero the dial. You then move the handle back down to the load position and you make sure that the needle rises up to the red indicator right here. Once all that is done, you are ready to load your decimeter. And you do that by pulling the handle back to the load position. And then you have this little slot right here with two pins that fit nicely onto the holes on the decimeter. You then push the handle over to the read position, and then the readout of the cumulative radiation dose appears on the dial. 
and this one appears to have accumulated around 20 Röntgen in radiation. So given that this decimeter has a little label on the back indicating what the accumulated radiation dose was when it was last measured in 1989, we should be able, theoretically, to determine how much additional radiation it absorbed in the intervening 30 years, correct? Well, alas, no. Because if you look closely, you'll see that the readout on the decimeter is given in rads, whereas this machine gives its readout in Röntgens, and the two units are not easily convertible. Röntgens are an old unit based on the ionization of dry air by radiation, whereas the rad is based on the biological effects of radiation exposure. And depending on the specific tissue that is being exposed to radiation, whether the brain, which is not very sensitive at all, or say the bone marrow and the intestines, which are very sensitive, one Röntgen of radiation can induce anywhere between one and four rads in the body. And so this really doesn't give a good indication because it could have absorbed anywhere from pretty much nothing to four times the original dose. So one last little detail before we move on, if we actually look at the lid of the CP95 decimeter reader, you'll see there's this little hinged compartment here. If we open that up, we'll see there's a pair of fuses for the circuit and also two brackets for holding the specialized tool for opening the decimeters. I'm also told that this would have contained a pair of specially prepared decimeters that were exposed to a very specific amount of radiation, and those could be loaded into the device to calibrate it prior to reading other decimeters. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching, and a huge shout out to Gord Crossley, Doug Carpenter, and Dirk Guerin for allowing me to borrow all of this really neat equipment to show you today. Now, in future videos, we'll be continuing our look at NBCW equipment, both military and civilian, from the Cold War era, so please stay tuned for that. Until then, I'm Jean Messier from Our Own Devices. Have a great day.